What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the Stock Hustle channel with your boy, William. Today is Tuesday, October 26. Uh, as always, guys, nothing that is discussed on the channel is financial advice. It is simply financial education. Uh, I simply want to teach people how they don't have to slave in that nine to five. Instead, you can hustle 24 seven in the market and acquire or accomplish all your financial dreams and goals you ever thought you wanted to accomplish, right? Um, as always, if you appreciate the video or appreciate the message, give me a like or subscribe to the channel as it does help with the channel's growth or simply just share the video with anyone you feel would benefit from it. Uh, we're going to try to keep today's video short as I know that's something you guys want and prefer. So let's get into it. As you guys see from the top left corner, today's ticker is SOFI or SoFi Technologies Incorporated. Now, this is a fintech company. We'll get into some of the dynamics of that here in a bit. Let's go through some channel fund or some ticker fundamentals right on the chart. As you guys do see, this company started as a SPAC. For those of you who don't know what a SPAC is, it's Special Purpose Acquisition Company. As of last year, late 2020, uh, there was a lot of hype around it around November, December. I was an early investor through the merger, through the SPAC merger, and I sold here at this pink arrow here essentially. Uh, I did miss out on this nice little gap up uh, towards the end before I did this runoff or sell off, excuse me, as we had that NASDAQ correction in the early part of the year that basically ended and expired back here in May, uh, followed by another run up through the June pre-squeeze for AMC and GME, followed by another sell off. As you guys do see the low being down here at this 1361, the low of the year, however, came earlier at 1319 or 1318. But essentially, if you dip bought this and you dip bought this in early August, you have essentially gained $7 per share that you picked up. So shout out to you. Uh, if you did go ahead and accomplish that again, any earnings or any gain that you make in the market is something I feel should be applauded. Because uh, again, it's it's uh, people think it's really easy, but if you've been in the market or traded in the market, you know it's actually not that easy, right? It takes some skill and finesse um, and some experience to get to that point to where you become profitable. But it can be done. I promise you, it can be done. Anybody can do this. Uh, as you see, we are sitting here at this resistance of $20.85, sitting directly below it. We have earnings coming up uh, essentially, what is that, November 10th, I believe? Yeah, November 10th after market close is when we were reporting earnings. As you do see here, the last earnings we had was on August 12th, and we did miss essentially by 48 cents uh, on those earnings. Again, being a FinTech company, you got to remember this is early on. Uh, it takes time for their earnings to become impactful because they have to build their client base. But even though, you know, it's early on, they still have a significant amount of clients, and you're about to see that here in a minute. But looking at the MACD, you see we are currently sitting in a buying period. Our RSI is currently sitting in overbought, so you can expect this to cool off down to the neutral. Again, neutral being here where my cursor is around 50, so you can expect that to come down. Uh, can't live there forever, right? And if you go to historical views, you see anytime it's hit overbought, it corrects back down to the downside. Uh, and it's done that on multiple occasions, even right from the start. So uh, I fully expect it to do the same thing. If you're looking at the ATR, you see a 97 cent swing or otherwise a $1.94 is what it can swing to the upside or downside. So keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, looking at this chart, I would expect it to fall somewhere closer to this 1898 support, uh, especially with this RSI being so overextended at this time. But uh, let's get into some of the dynamics of what is SoFi. So SoFi, as I mentioned, is a fintech company. Essentially, it is an online financial institution that offers, as you guys can see, a multitude of products, right? So their whole business model is, first and foremost, establishing a new client, right? Opening a deposit account, for example, is a quick example. As that client grows, right? Let's say later you want a credit card. They got you on credit, right? Uh, if let's say later you want an auto loan, they got you on auto loans. Let's say later you want to apply for a student loan. They got you on student loans, even refinance student loans or medical resident refinancing, right? They have all kinds of lending, specifically student loans and refinancing of student loans is a big, 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 big sector that not a lot of big banks do nowadays. So the fact that they offer it is pretty bullish to me. Personal loans for credit consolidation, they got you there too. A wedding loan, travel loan, family planning, you whatever, you name it, they got it. Literally, it is a one-stop shop. Let's say you, you went to school, consolidated some debt, you got a car, uh, you make good money, and now you want to buy a home. Boom. Uh, mortgage. Simple. Uh, let's say now that you got the house, you got the car, you got the kids, uh, you got essentially the dream life, now it's time to start planning for retirement. Boom. Investments. They also do that too. Literally any sector you can think of, 
uh, for finance, they got you. And that's what makes them so bullish, right? Not very many banks can offer this many products, right? Specifically, this is really bullish for a company who it is completely based online, right? There is not one single brick and mortar so far across the country or anywhere around the globe, right? It is all strictly online. Uh, that means their overhead is extremely low, like none, right? Uh, other than their headquarters, which I believe is based out of Northern California. Don't quote me on that. I didn't actually look that up because I didn't think it would be important. But this kind of gives you an understanding. Essentially, this company does a lot. And for being early on, um, they have a lot of potential coming forward. And that's why I, instead of going through the investor presentation that I found under here, which is an about section and investors, they have a presentation that covers all the financials, right? I thought that'd be a little bit too boring. Instead, I'm going to quote an article that I found that kind of gives you the same concept of what that presentation would give you, but I'm only going to pull the highlights of what I want to talk about. So as you can see, this article from Seeking Alpha, which I rarely quote, uh, is talking about disruptive players in industries being the winner take all, right? And they go on to quote like Amazon, Facebook, DoorDash, Uber, Expedia, Booking, right? LinkedIn, uh, Netflix, Airbnb, and Spotify. Like I'm sure a lot of those companies, you either do business with all of them or some of them or most of them, right? But so far they are saying is essentially this, but for the finance industry, right? Or the money industry, right? Specifically because of the mass mal multitude of products that they can offer their client base, uh, from checking, investing, credit, home loans, in-school loans, credit cards, you name it. They literally have it all under one roof for their consumers, which makes them super bullish for this industry, right? Uh, it's a one-stop shop. Money app could present a huge investing opportunity. SoFi has highlighted $2 trillion. Repeat that again. $2 trillion total addressable market. And it may become the winner for early investors. As I did mention from the start of the video, I am bullish on this play. Currently, I do not hold a position for full transparency, but I am going to be establishing a long position and adding or dollar cost averaging in, uh, holding this for a long period of time. On the short term, I have a way that I think most of you can play it if you're interested, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, lending business. SoFi has additionally received a preliminary approval for its bank charter. This is super important in October 2020, and it has acquired Golden Pacific Bank Corp in March 2021 in order to help speed up its approval process, right? If you're looking at this demonstration from the slide, this is a screen they pulled from the presentation I was telling you about. The dark blue is what they're projected to do through 2022 through 2025 on their own. 2021 is here, as you see, very small, very minimal. The light blue is what they will gain by getting that bank charter. And I know that doesn't really make sense, but what, what does that mean? By acquiring the bank charter, SoFi will be able to accept consumer deposits and more profitability offer its loan products to members, right? Competitors such as Lending Club and Square uh, have already received approval for their banking charter applications, and it's potentially just a matter of time before SoFi's application is approved. Before Both Lending Club and Square have massively benefited from their banking charters, and a final approval could act as a catalyst to fuel SoFi's hyper growth projections. So what this article is leading to you to believe is that kind of like Square and kind of like Lending Club, gaining and getting this approved bank charter is going to project, like shoot this company into the moon. If you don't feel that's possible, check out the previous video I uploaded to this one, which was UPST Upstart, the AI lending company. That'll show you what a rocket to a moon looks like. Uh, and this company is just as capable because this company offers a lot more products than UPST. Uh, obviously, they're not as refined as UPST, right? I'm not going to say that one's better than the other, but uh, they are disruptive in their industries. SoFi is totally capable of doing the same thing, right? Long term. <coughs> as you see here, Upstar has been one of the best performing stocks since going public late last year with a staggering return of 1,000%. If you invested in Upstart in my previous video, man, I literally salute you. You have made a killing this year, literally. Like that's the only play you needed to have, and you made, you murdered the market. It's awesome. Shout out to you. Uh, Galileo is their software. Uh, has more than doubled its number of accounts to nearly 79 million from 36 million. And here they go on to take that snippet of that projection, giving you that exact number. Uh, what was the other piece? Oh, SoFi Financial Services provides nearly every type of financial product. Already discussed that under the sun. Uh, grew its revenue 600% year over year in quarter two. With 17 million in revenue, this segment has or was responsible for just 7% of total sales. So of the 17 million in revenue, it's only 7%. That's, 
crazy numbers man for early on company in fintech that's this is some staggering numbers right uh it did have a loss of 24.7 million this however it was a 6.2 million dollar improvement from the previous year or a previous quarter of 30.9 so the fact that they're lowering their losses is something you need to pay attention to especially for a company early on you want to see these type of things like you can expect them to see a loss right or not be profitable but what you want to see is improvement right there are plenty other big name companies out there that are not profitable just a quick quick hit uber tesla don't believe me look into the financials dig into it you'll see for yourself what i mean uh conclusion for this reason i'm raising the price target to an entry of 20 dollars where currently we're sitting already essentially at that price target 2085 uh, i'm not really going to go with their price target i actually found some better ones uh, for nasdaq is where i usually like to go for price targets because they usually give a bigger diversity there are three analysts covering this you do see you're rated as a strong buy jeffries morgan stanley oppenheimer uh, you see the high of 30 mid of 24.58 and low of 1650 well we're sitting at 20 so that gives you essentially a three dollar upside to the 24 or essentially a ten dollar upside to the 30 dollar price target just so everybody is aware there is has been some institutional buying in quarter two 2.47 billion shares of sofi were bought up by big name institutions uh the leaders that you usually like to see for like renaissance blackrock vanguard have not arrived to the party yet so they're going to be uh relatively late to this party however i do fully anticipate that they will be there however you do have some giants like credit squeeze morgan stanley you know some of the other ones right it's not always necessary that you see blackrock vanguard and renaissance technologies there that's just a preference i have right it just kind of solidifies a company in itself but that kind of gives you the financials and the rundown of price targets and analysis or analysis uh, that some of the professionals have given uh, the last piece i always like to leave you guys with is the option chain right so uh, i'll take my filters off because i was already pre-screening this trying to find some opportunities if you take all the filters off no premium sets right and we just look at straight the charts right you see that we are bullish for the october 29th expiration uh the november 5th uh, all the way through the november 19th this is the monthly and if you're looking at the strikes you see 17 50 20 21 22 and 25 are all pretty bullish now you can like i've already explained in previous videos you can formulate an opinion by simply just filtering out and going by premiums that's the way i like to do it uh, another way you can also see kind of what big money is doing is by doing it this way right so there's a new feature on unusual wells that i think is pretty awesome that i don't think a lot of people really know how to use because again it is relatively new so when you see these enormous trades like this like for example this 129,000 that was bought up on october 25th at 11:01 a.m right and you're wondering well, well what are they what are they thinking for this april 14 2022 on these little indicators right here you can click on these now and it takes you to this screen right possible related trades and you see down here it says visualize <clears throat> the trade you can click on that and it will actually let you dig into this trade and give you some visuals of what these trades represent which is pretty interesting especially if you're new to options this most definitely helps you kind of understand what big institutions are doing or thinking with these trades so click on dig into this trade we go down and you can see that they bought 400 calls at 35 dollars strike and they bought 400 calls at the 2250 strike right so they essentially bought 37,400 of the $35 strike and 127,000 of this 2250. You go down a little bit further, it tells you that they were debited $164,400. Their max loss is just that, what they were debited. However, take a look at this max profit, unlimited. That's a beautiful trade, especially when they hit. I promise you that feeling is amazing. Uh, but as you guys can see, the visual, essentially what they're wanting is through earnings or through april of 2022 they're wanting this company or ticker to shoot up because the more higher it goes up the more profitable they become you go down a little further and you click here where it says profit and loss and it actually breaks it down by money so now we can clearly see well if sofi were to go to the downside they start losing money and they start losing significant money if the price gets way way too low right i mean i don't know about you but i wouldn't be comfortable losing thirty five thousand dollars. that would make me very uncomfortable or very upset however uh, i would be more than elated to make five hundred and forty five thousand if sofi simply goes up thirteen dollars per per share right that would be amazing that would be some amazing gains but as you guys can see let's say uh it just carried some momentum like upst did and it just shoots up straight to the sky well at 67 dollars 20 they would essentially make 
three million dollars on this trade by november 21st and again these are hypotheticals i understand but the point of it is it's a visual for you to see what this trade represents um for institutions they are bullish and they are long on it so then you can kind of formulate okay well if they're willing to put 129,000. I mean, I'm, I'll be comfortable to throw in my 200, 300, or whatever, right? But for furthermore, it gives you education as well, because like for example, this put trade, right? You see, they sold a put essentially at twenty dollars and fifty cents, and then they bought a put at twenty dollars and fifty cents. So when you want to visualize this, because it kind of seems confusing, this is where people I think get confused because not just because you buy a call is it bullish, and not just because you buy a put is it bearish, right? this is the tool the difference maker that will teach you those distinctions right so for example you buy 440 <clears throat> puts at twenty dollars and fifty cents and then you sold 440 puts at twenty dollars and fifty cents and this is what that visual gives you essentially what they're wanting is for the price to be pinned at a point which specifically looks like twenty dollars and sixty six cents would be where they want it to stay right they want it to basically trade sideways if you will right how do we know that go down a little further click on the profit and loss and we can clearly see by the money essentially if SoFi keeps trading neutral or trading sideways all the way through November 5th they profit thirteen thousand three hundred dollars if it doesn't go up it doesn't go down just stays flat going neutral right only when the trade goes up or when the trade goes down do they lose money right and this is another visual for that specific trade at that specific premium amount right so I think that I think you guys kind of get the point uh, if you don't, as always, leave a question down in the comments below. I promise you I will get to you. You can always tweet me uh, on Twitter or IG. Um, and as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next one.